I V M. Hello and welcome to the Habit Coach Podcast. I am Ashton Doctor, your Habit Coach, and today we have a very special guest with us. I'm very excited for two reasons. One is the ideology and the philosophy and 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 what we're going to be discussing today. But the second reason is because he is so cool. He's a fighter jet pilot. Okay, and I used to be a mad, crazy fighter plane fan when I was a kid. So for me, it's very exciting whenever I talk to a fighter pilot, and that gives me, you know, well, goosebumps. And he used to fly an F sixteen. So for you guys who know what an F sixteen is, it's a very, very cool fighter aircraft. So without further ado, let me welcome Rico Rakowski on our podcast today. Hi, Rico. Hello, Ashton. How are you doing? Thank I'm you. Good. So good. Thank you. My pleasure. Rico, I'm so excited to have you because, you know, the whole idea behind, you know, what you're talking about is so interesting. The ideology is just two choices and we're going to get into that as we go ahead. Um, how did this start about? How did you get into thinking like this? Where did it begin? You know, actually, the true background to this is because of flying. You know, I, I grew up with a lot of self-doubt and, and uh, you know, lacking confidence, but I had this big dream, as you know. Yeah. You know, anybody who's got the big dream, the passion carries you through all the fear. It carries you through all the doubt, you know. And so uh, I, when I got into flight school, and I finally made the dream come true. I thought, well, you know, maybe there's some kids out here that are really they have a similar kind of dream, but they're not sure how to make it happen either. Mm -hmm. So I actually was invited to speak one day at a school and share some ideas. And that's where the idea of, of, of uh, in explaining to kids how to make their dreams come true. That's where the idea the just two choices um, philosophy started mm -hmm. to open up. And I'll add one last thing, which is I started off with kids in their teens mm -hmm. and found out that, and I mean this in the very best way, um, it's too late. You know, the yeah. best time to reach the kids is in the earlier years. And so I started working with, in, the, in America, the fourth and fifth graders, which are about the eight to 10 year olds. Mm -hmm. And they get it. They get just two choices instantly. And I said, this is the best place to, to, to teach it because now they have an insurance policy about their choices as you start to get into um, peer pressure later on growing up in life. And of course, not only just peer pressure, but mm -hmm. choice of whether or not you want to reach your dream or goal. And as you know, there's a lot of people that that there are more people who are going to talk, try to talk you out of it than try to convince you to, to follow through. And so that's where, that's where it got started. I mean, tied aviation, mm -hmm. seeing it was just choices and then working with kids. And, and how does the two choices approach come from aviation? Like what was it as a pilot that you suddenly realized that, oh, wow, two choices, two choices. Where did that come from? You know, even I, I you know, I, I flew for almost 25 years for the airlines too. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I did. And, and so, uh, on a broader scale, and I'll use an airline because it's more, it's more relatable. Mm -hmm. There are so many things in every moment that you have to give your attention to. But as mm -hmm. you know, as, and as a coach for habits, you know, right. it really comes down to where is exactly your focus going to go. Yeah. And so in the, uh, in the airline, um, in flying an airplane, you're constantly using your just two choices to monitor. So you look at the engines, you'll say engine temperature, too hot, too cold you know, comparing, you know, how's the engine running? Hydraulics. You look up top and you say, are the electrics? Are the electrics in? And so, you know, you sweep around the cockpit with these glances. And this is why the just two choices approach um, without getting ahead of myself, I'll say, is about, it's about a visual. Right. You know, it's about mm -hmm. this. Everything's cool. And then your mind goes back to the passengers. What's the temperature? Is everybody comfortable? What's the ride like? Is it too bumpy? Not, you know, that should every should everybody be seated and buckle their seatbelts? Should we quit serving beverages now because it's too bumpy with turbulence? Hmm. And so you have to go through this continuous nonstop process the whole time you're flying of evaluating. But when you look at it, it's, it's no different than somebody saying they want to dance or they want to, you know, that they, they want to be a great dancer. They want to be, they want to have a fabulous podcast because if their choices are one, what they want, and they learn to discipline their choices that way, mm -hmm. then they get what you have, you know, fabulous podcast. And if their choices are sloppy or they're bouncing back and forth, then they're going to have a mediocre kind of podcast. Correct. Does that help? I mean, is that, does that explain a little bit or would you like you more? Know, put, because, you know, what you said was that, especially flying an airline, you have so many different things that you have to take care of. 
and that's like life right you have so many different balls in the air and with each of those and the way you said it that you just have to cycle through each of them you have to break them down into smaller pieces and say yes no yes no yes no yes no or however which way like for example like you gave the example of a light a light is either on or off correct right. so it is only in those in those states and um, and it makes so much sense because you can directly relate that to our life and um, and and you know when it comes to these these two choices and just two choices how do you how would you explain it to a child like how did you explain it to the kids that i think that's no, the, the best kids, way to start yep and i'm uh, being very very candid i mean i'll, I'll pull the smaller one up it's a little bit Thank easier you. Mm-hmm. but you explain it this way you explain right. it with you show it with a visual okay and they they instantly get it at, hmm. at a younger age hmm. they're used to this they're used right. to seeing pictures right correct they're used to seeing it and hmm. so and immediately you hmm. know picture what do they say pictures worth a thousand words yeah visuals teach I read this visuals teach 60,000 times faster than words. Wow. People get it. And Good. so so if you were there if you're, if you're to give a PowerPoint presentation to to 8 through 10 year olds, mm-hmm. I mean in a matter of 3 minutes they're going to be leaving the room, yes. you know. Yeah. But but you put the visuals up there and you say mm-hmm. this is how this arrow applies mm-hmm. you're getting a a better grade in school. Mm-hmm. It applies to your Uh, playing better in sports and soccer mm-hmm. or in in american football or in mm-hmm. basketball or mm-hmm. it applies to your being better in music mm-hmm. it's there are just two choices and they go and they get it and sometimes they'll they'll start to laugh and they'll go yeah last night i used my choices not to study i used mm-hmm. my choices not to practice you know and i didn't listen to my parents and mm-hmm. and therefore they get it They know that their performance isn't what it should be, and that's why it is. I have to say, Ashton, what's kind of interesting. You've probably seen this in mm. all your years of coaching. Mm. Adults have used their just two choices to try to explain that there are not just two choices. They they use their just two choices to try to talk out of things, mm. and the kids go, "Yeah, you're right. I didn't make the I didn't make the best choice." Correct. And they just get on with it. So it's 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 a fascinating difference between trying to teach just two choices to young kids and mm. adults. Adults will have all kinds of reasons why their choices why their life doesn't match their choices and in fact the fact that they have multiple choices or they think they have multiple choices is an excuse right there correct because oh i don't know what to choose i don't know where to go and that's when that feeling of confusion comes in when that feeling of overwhelm comes in especially during a time like this when everything's so uncertain how do we yeah. break it down into something so simple that we can start you know moving ahead and starting to make choices And, and and that's the whole and I'm glad you mentioned that that's exciting to me because what what I'm trying to do is to raise on a broader scale raise humanity to the awareness that they've always been using just two choices I mean you have that yellow shirt on today because you're either going to wear it or you're not right yes you know you're wearing headphones because you're either going to wear them or you're not hmm. I mean it's it's all there but humanity over the eons that humanity's been on the planet just hasn't thought about it from that point of view but now i think because of what's happened in the world over the past 6 months in particular mm. it has raised the awareness mm. of choice do i wear a mask or not wear a mask do mm. i go to this gathering or not go to this gathering do i believe that piece of information or do i not believe that piece of information so it has heightened you know the awareness of choice mm. and and so in the past it's just been a seamless piece of fabric and if i could add one other thought is i like to use the word options You know, there might be 12 options out there, but there are just two choices. And mm-hmm. the mind goes through real quickly and says, okay, option 5 compared to option 2. Okay, no, nope, I like option 5. Option 5 compared to option 6. Option no, nope, I like option 5. Option 5 compared to option 12. But the mind goes through it at lightning speed. Yeah. The same way a computer goes through using only a 0 and a 1. So that's, that's how as you know, that's how computers think. You're aware, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, but that's how, you know, our technology matches humanity in terms of what we created so we finally create a computer using a zero and one and the human mind doesn't want to believe that that's that's the process it it actually hasn't it actually has identified for itself how it thinks because every choice is mutually exclusive of the other correct beautifully put because i had five different options for a t-shirt correct <laughs> and i would have called those a choice but actually you're saying that the choice was should i wear blue or should i wear blue or not should i wear white or not should i wear black or not or should i wear yellow or not 
correct? Right. And and each of those options had a choice that I had to go through. Is that the and, way that I'm looking at it? Yes, and, and I'd like your example because here's the here's the question. You might have said, "How do I want to feel today?" Yes. And you say, "I want to feel my word." I mean, I like the word high vibe. I yes. want to feel high vibe. Yes. And you say, "What?" Well, and I don't know what your high vibe colors are, but you might have looked at, you might have lumped out of your five shirts. Hmm. You you lumped three of them into high vibe and two of them into lower vibe. So Correct. in those just two choices, you automatic, automatically cut out two. Mm-hmm. And then you, okay, the high vibe difference. Give me two more colors that you're high vibe about. You know, obviously the yellow because of your, uh, your, your, uh-huh. your branding, you know. Correct. And, but, well, and the blue, uh, okay. like, like the color that you're wearing. I love that color as well. A, a nice light blue is a high vibe color for me. So, so then when you, when you push those other two off to the side, you say, mm-hmm. man, I want to be in a high vibe state today. Mm-hmm. And then you looked at those three other colors. Maybe it was a green. You mm-hmm. immediately know, mm-hmm. you, you immediately lump together the two high vibe colors of mm-hmm. yellow and blue. Mm-hmm. And you said, you know, I like green, but mm-hmm. the green's not going today. Mm-hmm. And then you said, all right, out of the blue and out of the yellow. But mm-hmm. you did it at lightning speed. The mind does it. And the feelings, you know, right. the choices that go with the feelings did it. And there were just... It was a just two choices process the whole way. Uh, I'd like to add, you know, like when people go out to dinner, mm. you know, you know, they, they might have three or four options for dessert, right? Correct. But how do they start it? They're just two choices. Do I want dessert or yes. I don't want dessert, yes. right? So it's, it's seamless. It's, it's, it's so much a fabric of life that humanity hasn't noticed it. Mm. And, and we've moved on to computers, but our computers validate the way they think. And they're getting better with AI, right? Beautiful. Yeah. So, so how would we break down this one line, just two choices? How would you, uh, you know, impart this philosophy out to somebody? How would you explain it to everyone? I like to explain it to the point that, uh, from the point of view that we're just always comparing. That's mm-hmm. all, mm-hmm. you know, um, like, you know, which shirt do I wear today? Mm-hmm. You know, do I want coffee right now or I don't. And there's the phrase. Yeah. Do I want it now or do I want it later, right? Just two choices. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'm going to hold off on the coffee. Let's talk about getting up in the morning. We're, you're, you're part of the world. You know, you're up in the morning. Um, yeah. uh, do I shower now or clean myself or shave now or do I shave mm-hmm. later? No, mm-hmm. I'm going to go ahead and shave now. And so there's always, I think the simplest way to explain it is there's always this comparison that, again, it's, it's, it's a seamless fabric that is mm-hmm. underneath us mm-hmm. and we're always comparing one thing or the other. Do I say mm. hello to somebody or do I just be quiet? You know, okay. so I, it's, it's, it's the comparison is that I say, and, and which do you do? Uh, mm. Even in, even in the case of sometimes perhaps you're the same way. You now you wake up in the morning and you're just, you, as soon as you wake up you, in within 30 seconds, you're in overwhelm because mm. you know, you know, you know, you know, the, the podcast couldn't be done last week and you know, how's all this going to be done. But I, I talk myself, I have to talk myself into the just two choices as well. I go, hmm. all right, I know I got a hundred things that everybody's after me about today, Good but idea. I have just two choices. Hmm. Am I going to buy into the overwhelm or am I not? And in a matter of now, because of practice, hmm. in a matter of just a couple of minutes, I start laughing and I go, okay, you know how this works. <laughs> and, and, um, and I narrow, and I, you're comparing what needs to be done as your highest priority, or mm. perhaps maybe sometimes it's the easiest. Correct. You get, get your small wins in. Yes, exactly. Get your mm. small wins in. Mm. And then and the next thing you know, your feet are on the ground and you're, you know, you're stepping out with life. What you about what are some of your thoughts? What are some of your thoughts there? You know, because it is it it merges so well with the habit philosophy, right? Because uh, you're either gonna do it or you're not gonna do it. If you if you have your set if you're going to meditate today and your habit is to meditate for 15 minutes, are you going to do it or not? And and the thing that I say on the Habit Coach podcast is that even if you can't do the 15 minute meditation, just sit in that place. So in yes. your mind, you feel that you've done it. So you keep the momentum going. So yes. the choice of, for example, when I t- tell someone about starting a yoga habit or yoga practice, and yes. you know there are days when you just don't feel like doing it, and I understand that. Just roll out the mat and sit on it for a few minutes. Correct? So what you've done is you've made the choice to actually do it. Whether you've done the 15 minutes or not, that's a separate thing that you can, that, that'll evolve over time. But at least the choice that you did it instead of saying, nah, not today. Because then the nah, not today becomes a new habit. Exactly right. I mean, I, I love it. And, and that's how I look at it too, is that um, 
you know, life is life is about the small choices. Mm-hmm. The big choices can't happen. As you know, they can't happen without the small choices. The the meditating, you know, and, and for me and my prayer, you know, uh, let's just say 15 minutes. It That can't happen in most cases until you get accustomed to make, if you weren't doing it before, say you're starting from zero. Yes, from zero. Then you go, huh, wow. And, you know, I, all right, I did it for three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You know, I'm almost one one third of the way there. Okay. But, and of course, the other choice could be you could say you could beat up on yourself and say, I don't think I'll ever catch on. But you could say the other choice being I'm almost a third of the way there. Mm-hmm. So that's how Very that adjusts cool. to. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. I, I, you explained it well, which is it really is about these small choices and building that momentum keyword. Yeah, really. really because you're going to build momentum anyway. Is it going to be for what you want or for what you don't want? Just two there choices. You go. There you go. So in fact, when I talk about habits, I talk about another philosophy, which is never miss two days in a row. Okay. Beautiful. So when you're building your momentum, what happens is that sometimes life gets in the way, right? Um, you fall sick. You can't do what you wanted to do. But the next day, make sure you do it. Because otherwise, making an excuse becomes the new habit. And we don't realize this, but excuses become a habit. Our thoughts become our habits. So just like that, you know, if, if people could take this idea of yours, just two choices and make that as a habit saying that, you know, right now um, I want to do this, but I want to also want to do that. How do I do this? How do I make it break it down? I actually only have two choices. What is it that I really want right now and divide it up? You know, um, Rico, like, for example, in psychology, they talk about um, avoidance, avoidance conflicts. Uh, approach avoidance conflicts, approach approach conflicts, right? And 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 guys, these are basically ways in which you think about um, your options. They're not choices, they're options technically, where um, one is a bad thing that can happen, one is a good thing that can happen. So avoidance is the bad thing, approach is the good thing. So you can have a good and bad choice that you have to make, which is obviously a no-brainer, you want to make the good one. But then comes the tricky ones where you have only two bad choices. So you have to choose the less worse one. Or you have two good choices, like you have two favorite episodes playing at the same time. Which one do you listen to first? Correct. So those are choices as well. How does how do you break it down with the with, with the just two choices method when you have these kind of strange uh, combinations of good and bad and and something that you want to avoid and versus something that you actually desire? I, no, I think you described it perfectly well. I mean, it really comes down to. I mean, if you got a choice of two bad choices, it's like you know which ones, you know which ones the uh, the, the minimal risk. And, and let's use aviation then as an example. You know, you probably heard, right, you know, right. the, uh, uh, the airplane that landed on the river. The, okay. the, the Hudson. Hudson. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. the Hudson Sully. Hmm. You know, <laughs> just two choices. Hmm. I, I either land on a busy freeway hmm. with hundreds of cars and people going to work, hmm. or I land on a river and the water's calm and no, neither choice. And we take the we take the risk of everybody drowning. We take the risk of the engines ripping off. We take the risk of all kinds of possibilities. You know, uh, nobody's landed on on the, on a river. I mean, he, river. he broke. And now on everybody goes. Oh, I got a river to land. Look around for some water to land. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, every pilot, millions of pilots all over the world kind of went. Oh yeah, and all of a sudden, millions of pilots know mm. I can land on a river. Right. But there's two bad choice. There are two choices where you go, I don't like either of these, but which one's okay. worse land on a freeway. Which and, one's worse. Yeah. And, and, no. and then the good ones are always like, you know, wow, <laughs> I got that one and I got that one too. Which one do I, which one's high yeah. vibe, you know, the, the most passionate one you bring up. Can I add one other thing to that? Sure. The other, the other thing I'd like to add is that it, you alluded to it in the discussion before, which was, hmm. Humanity, I feel, and, and, and please, if you don't feel this way, maybe it's not that way in your world or other people's mm-hmm. world. Mm-hmm. But in general, mm-hmm. humanity spends most of their time using their just two choices to talk about what they don't want. I don't want to be with this person. I don't want to be, uh, have all this extra weight. You know, I don't yes. want to go and exercise. You know, I, I, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're building that habit that momentum mm. and they actually are achieving what they don't want. And they're frustrated because they're achieving what they don't want, but they haven't made the choice to achieve what they want. And so that's another thing I'd like to 
use the just two choices to help people turn around. I call it a flip in thinking. Hmm. Flip your thinking so that you spend the majority of your time talking about what you want. Hmm. The same as talking about the habit of, of meditating. That's what you want. You want yeah. that momentum. So, um, so you alluded to that. I appreciate that. That's great. Beautifully put. You know, the way to think about it is that if your entire focus is going to something that you don't want, yeah. that is where your intention is going. Technically, your intention is going towards what you don't want instead of this entire other world that is possibly out there. So you're only so focusing on. Yeah. And that, that's, that's where the opportunity lies. Correct. Yeah. And uh, I should be surprised, you know, really. There you go. And, 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 and the problem is that our mind is tuned to risk aversion. Correct. Yes. So because uh, like I keep saying, like when we do our de-stressing workshops, I keep saying that our, our human body has three hormones dedicated to stress. Now, which other aspect of us has three or something, you know, like um, like like in aviation, you have redundant systems in, in, in the, just, you read my mind. I was just thinking that myself. Right? <laughs> so like, adrenaline has a redundant system called norepinephrine. So if adrenaline doesn't work, you have norepinephrine. Now, which system has that? So which is why our bodies are designed for risk aversion. But in today's world, when not everything is a life-threatening risk, yeah. you correctly said we have to flip our mind to start opening up and seeing where are the opportunities that exist. And searching yeah. for opportunities is a completely different thing. Like landing on the Hudson was an opportunity thought. It wasn't a risk aversion thought. Oh, very well. Yes. You know, right? just made me think of a quote from a, a, a long time ago Star Wars movie. Uh, Luke asks Yoda, mm-hmm. says, is the dark side stronger? Mm. And Yoda says, no. He says, it's, it's quicker, easier. It's more yeah. seductive. And so yeah. when I say quicker, easier, more seductive, it's quicker and easier to make those choices about what we don't want mm. to make those, and then to make those choices about what we do want because we're, we're changing a momentum. Mm. You know, so it's quicker and easier to get back into, I'm going to eat whatever it is that I know I, you know, isn't supporting my dream of, of, of better health or, mm. um, or getting back and getting back with that person that it really doesn't support, but it's, it's quicker, it's easier. And so it feels, it, I, I thought it's an interesting word, more seductive. Mm. I, I, I interpret it to mean it, it's just, it pulls you into it yes. where, you know, the, 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 the choice for the light, so to speak, yeah. Um, yeah. it takes effort at first. The negativity is seductive, correct? Yes. That's why negative news is seductive. That's why, you know, oh. like you see in social media and all the news that's there, negativity yeah. is, is what pulls you in. And flipping that thinking around makes so much sense. And, and just like that, that's a choice. Flipping it around is a choice. As you know so well, I mean, the only time you can make a choice is now, is in the present moment. And, you know, of course, that goes over some people's heads. It, hmm. it seems a little too spiritual, a little too... Um, etherical, mm. you know, but, mm. but it, it is the reality that, you know, it, you know, you, you can, and I had some difficult challenges growing up. I can go back in an instant. Yes. Choose to go back to those experiences. Mm. And in fact, I've had, uh, I had one of, I had my mom asked me one time, she mm. says, son, you don't, there's five of us. Mm-hmm. And the son, uh, I'm number two. She says, okay. uh, why don't you talk about those kinds of things, you know, mm-hmm. some things that, that happened. And I, I said, mom, I, I've learned that I have just two choices. I said, and they're mutual choices. I said, they, they cancel, they, they're mutually exclusive. Mom, I said, if I spend time talking about that stuff that happened, then I can't spend time living my dream of writing books mm-hmm. because I can't do both choices at once. I can't mm-hmm. live my dream of flying airplanes because I'm spending all my time trying to find a needle in a haystack about why something may not have worked out. That's how I see it. And the rest okay. of the story is that I believe you'll find the needle in the haystack when you choose what you want. Even mm-hmm. if you had a, a very difficult growing up, the needle in the haystack will appear. But if you go looking for the needle in the haystack, you can spend your whole life looking for it. Correct. But live your passion, all of a sudden, oh, there it is. Oh, I found it. That's what that was. That's what that was. And you're so true, you know, uh, a, a thing that's missing, I think, in today's day and age is, is, is discovering your passions, because I think, um, you know, searching for hobbies is missing. And um, I'm sure that when you were growing up, there were so many hobbies that you had that, that you were properly passionate about that are still 
you know, at, at the back of your mind even now when you think about them. We know when you bring them, um, that's, that's interesting because when I, when I was growing up, I grew up in a small uh, coal mining town. Our, my family was coal miners. Mm -hmm. And um, I had two dreams. That one was aviation and the other mm -hmm. one was art. Oh, wow. Like, yeah. So the other side is, you know, your parents are afraid you're going to become a starving artist. <laughs> and then the other one is, you know, you know, then the other one being, uh, how are you going to get into flight school? You know, mm. I don't know. But I'll yeah. figure it out. So uh, initially I got turned down for flight school for the military. I, I started off with the military. Mm -hmm. And then um, so I was on my way to art school. Mm. And then all of a sudden there was a, uh, but if you don't put your application in just two choices, if mm -hmm. you don't apply, you're not on the list, right? Right. So, so they didn't have a slot, but I was on the list, right? Yeah. They told me no. So I'm going to art school. Mm. I'm all set to go to art school. I get a, my parents get a phone call. And they say, hey, does your son still want to go to fly school? And I, she, she got a hold of me and I said, heck yeah, I want to go to flight school. And I love a lot louder than that. And so I, I can always do art at another time. Okay. And so, um, so both of those passions, one just evolved later on and the other mm. one's book you know this is this is Lovely. just a book mm -hmm. but this represents this represents my artistic side and you yeah. know oh, by the way for those mm. of you who are chakra fans mm. okay yeah all seven chakra the, notice the cover of the book goes yeah. from you got from Muladhara right up to Swaristan and yeah yeah well, you'll find all the colors of the chakra in mm -hmm. order mm -hmm. lovely but, but that is but you know that's there's an there's an example of pat two passions um some people would say you you can't do both, and you say, "Well, I can't do both right now." And so I go fly first, and then I develop that other one while I'm flying. You know, you mm. had some time off from flying, and mm. and, uh, you, and you develop a process. And he said, "Well, I've got to bring this to life, especially to work with kids. Mm. Kids like they like images, mm. they like color. Mm. So why don't I do that? Super or not." Yeah. yeah, you know, because there's so many students who listen to this podcast and I get, um, I get messages from them all the time saying, I don't know what to do now. I'm doing engineering and I have no idea after engineering, what is it that I'm going to be doing? Because I really don't like engineering, you know, so these are the kinds of thought processes. And very often, you know, if you break it down to saying that you have two choices, yes. continue, don't continue, do this, don't do this, right? But first figure out what your options are. Very often we get overwhelmed with the options itself. And then we don't start removing those options from our list. So as a result, we just have what we think are too many choices, but actually just too many options and start reading them away from you. Very nice. And, and what comes to mind is um, um, uh, as an art person and as a pilot, what mm. comes to mind is, and you, you know a lot about airplanes already, I could tell, but you know, I, it's it's like looking at systems. Yeah, you know, say um, as an engine. I was well, not an engineer by trade, but mm. what I was picturing was somebody who had like as you were talking. I said, "Oh, here's somebody who sees an engineer, and they have five options, mm. and and just list them out. Yeah. What are your yeah. options that you're thinking about? Mm. And then do like you did with the shirt. You say mm. two of these five really." They're really not options that I, I want to pursue. And then you start mm. to look at the other three a little bit closer. And then you look at, you look at the work you're doing right now. And then you look at your, the, the, the choices of your passion in the work that you're in. And just like looking for that needle in the haystack, I, I, it's counterintuitive, I mm. think. But it appears. Yep. And, and Rico, how do we make this a habit? How do we make the just two choices um, philosophy, ideology, the way that you're thinking about it, habits, how do we bring it into our everyday life? Well, there's, there's, uh, there, there are two ways mm -hmm. I think that, uh, um, that accelerate it. One okay. of which is just, is just use the phrase, hmm. you know, look at, look at everything you're doing and go, all right, I'm using my credit card hmm. right now. Well, I'm going to pay for something right now. And I got right. just two choices. I'm going to use hmm. cash or credit, right? Correct. You say, okay, I'm going to use my credit card. Just mm -hmm. two choices. It's going to be approved or it's not going to be approved, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not going to. So start to look for the everyday kind of things like um, um, the door, just everything you touch. Mm -hmm. And I mean, your whole world, your whole existence, as you know, vibrationally is feedback to the, um, we're, we're, we're like um, tuning forks, right? Yes. And so, and how do we tune our bodies to attract mm -hmm. 
the things that we want to attract in life. It's by choice. Choice mm -hmm. is the tuner. I mean, choice is the tuning mechanism. There are just two. I'm going to tune it to a high vibe mm -hmm. or I'm going to tune it to a low vibe. So I would say the just two, two answers here, the just two choices phrase. Mm -hmm. and, and whatever you touch, whatever you reach for, whatever you look at, mm -hmm. you know, just say to yourself, just two choices. Now, the other one is to start to say the phrase, I choose to. Mm -hmm. I choose to pull up. I choose to pick this. I choose to wear this yellow shirt. Now, no, in, in a matter of five minutes of saying I choose to, you get tired of saying I choose to. However, your awareness is going to be, oh, I choose to. I'm engaged. I'm engaged in my life now. Where yeah. before it was just, oh, yellow shirt. I got to get to the kitchen. I've got to get my coffee. No, uh, I choose to put my shirt on right now before I go to the kitchen. You know, mm -hmm. instead of putting my shirt on while I'm going to the kitchen to make coffee. It, and so say the phrase I choose to. In, 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 uh, as a common phrase, and in a matter of just minutes, you'll find out that all of life is choice. Choice is everywhere. It's inescapable. It's unavoidable. So, so just, first, those just choices. And you start being aware of the number of choices that you're making every single day. Amen. Correct? You know, a no. simple habit, you're brushing your teeth. I choose to brush my teeth. All right, brush your teeth. I choose to make my coffee. Okay, I choose to make your coffee. And then it becomes a little subtler. You know, we talk about um, stimulus and response, correct? Yes. And we normally in psychology say that every stimulus has a response and it's almost immediate. You know, like cut karke, it happens. But the idea is that there is a pause that is very, very microscopic between the stimulus and the response. And that is technically a choice. And you can choose to respond this way. You can choose to respond differently. And, um, you know, the example I keep giving is that Imagine you were in, uh, in a restaurant and um, three people ran in with guns, right? Every single person in that restaurant would have a different um, response to that. The stimulus was the same. Three people ran in with a gun, but everybody would respond very differently to it. Some people might throw a plate at the person. Some people might hide under the desk. Some people might you know, run away. So the idea is that there are always choices and the stimulus between the stimulus and response. And the more conscious you get that you're constantly choosing, you can actually then start controlling your responses as well. So I think this is a beautiful way. And in fact, when, when I'd heard about what you were talking about, I immediately said, wow, this is exactly what it is. I can choose to be angry or not. It is not a default, correct? I can choose to then you know, figure out where my stress is coming from. I can choose to be happy about this or not. I can choose to laugh or not. But it is a choice that I can make. And if you, you know, if you learn this, my God, there is, you know, freedom. Life can suddenly start. Yeah, freedom. Because you're it's in freedom. control. Mm. Because, you know, um, it, it comes down to just two choices. And I'll give you an example. Um, you know, it comes down to freedom to, right? Mm -hmm. Freedom, whatever mm -hmm. you want. You know, if you say... Uh, uh, it, going back to earlier in our discussion, yeah. I choose to go after my dream or goal. And then you go, oh, oh but a lot of people say they don't think I have, the, I have what it takes to be mm. able to achieve that. Mm. And so now you've chosen to buy into somebody else's thought. You mm. haven't chosen to buy into your passion. You just now diverted your energy into somebody else's uh, belief. And so now you've watered down your own freedom of life because you could be out there. I, I can't tell you how many people have told me um, when I went to my guidance counselor and I told my guidance counselor in high school, I said, I, I want to be a pilot. God bless her. I mean, she was, she was, she just went, you need to do a junior college. You don't, you know, I don't think flying's she's flying's for you. And so I remember she said that to me as I was walking out the door. And I remember turning to my left. So I'm 17 years old. I mm -hmm. turned to my left and she said, Mr. Rakowski. And I said, yes, politely. You know, I mm -hmm. said, she said, you need to go to a junior college. You know, you don't need to go to flight school. And I remember to this day, I turned back around to walk out the door. I was not angry. Mm -hmm. Please, everybody on the podcast. Mm -hmm. I was not angry. I was not upset. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but I wasn't. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I just said, that doesn't sound right. You know, in here, vibrationally, yeah. I just went, that doesn't sound right. I'm going to try, you know, I'm going to try anyway. I can't tell you, I can't count how many people have said they've had guidance counselors or people say to them they shouldn't have been pilots. 
and they're regretting it today. Yes. That they did go do it. And so that's what I'm leading to with this example, you know, with that example about mm. you know, freedom. Mm. I, I've been, had the, op, the blessing to fly around the world, to fly faster than the speed of sound, to fly at nine G's and still stay conscious, you yeah. know, <laughs> and, and, and say, and, and to feel the technology in your hand that mm. allows you to perform. Um, for me, it's exciting, maybe not to anybody else, mm. but to allow me to perform, an, you know, a piece of machinery at peak performance in thousands of feet of air, you know, and, and, and to, and to do that, that's freedom. Mm. You know, that's the difference between me still being in my hometown and not having had the, ex- that experience and then me being able to talk with passion, you know, like I just described. And um, you, you, have, you have some thoughts that's behind that. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, it's so, it's so beautifully put. Very often we hear people saying, I have no choice. Right? I had no choice. I had no choice. You no, you always have a choice. Right? The fact that you accepted that you don't have a choice was a choice. Right? right? You know, the yeah. number of people who do not accept that they don't have a choice and then go out and do something about it. It's right. crazy. So, you know, you always have a choice. Everything is a choice. Your next breath is also a choice. And you can start thinking about things this way. Every time somebody forces you into something, you still have a choice. You can act far more. Like, well, you can act out of character if you want, but that's also a choice. So, so the idea is that there is always a choice. And if you can distill it down, to a yes or no, on or off, zero or one, yeah. you have it made. You have it set. It makes so much sense. Yeah, yeah. If you can, and 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 the, I, I like the way you put it. Distill it down consciously. Now making that choice consciously, you go. I want the zero. I want the one. I want yeah. the yes. I mean, and, and 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 so along those lines, I've used just two choices for many things. Lose mm-hmm. weight. I've, I've used it. I had a habit. Mm-hmm. That, you know, I'm not proud of, but I'll tell you. And I had a habit where I was, um, you know, I, I call it road drama. Okay. Now, I never gave anybody the international peace sign, you know, <laughs> or anything. I, 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 never, I never did that. Hmm. But sometimes, it, some days, it threw me off for, for hours. I would mm-hmm. be so angry when somebody would, it didn't happen often, but they'd cut me off. Mm-hmm. And then I, I, you know, in traffic or they do something, they just, I I say a lot of um, words in English that that are very colorful, and so I got tired of it. And one yeah. day I was going through this drama, and I just mm-hmm. I just started to laugh, and I said, "Rico, you know how this stuff works. There are just two choices. This driver isn't the person who's making you angry. Mm-hmm. You are choosing to respond that way." Okay. And so I started to choose differently. And now I just not too long ago had somebody cut across four lanes. They came out. Of a, of a shopping center, mm-hmm. cut across me another lane and went to the far two lanes to make a left-hand turn. Mm-hmm. They, what we use the phrase, thread the needle. Mm-hmm. They threaded the needle and mm-hmm. I just went, wow, nobody got hurt. Yeah. And the old me years ago would have wanted to drive up next to him, mm-hmm. you know, stare him down. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, uh, but, there's, but that's freedom. That's freedom. That's I'm freedom. not a, Mm. I can just tell the story. Yeah. I don't have upset, choosing to be upset. Go ahead. Yeah. And you, and you must come and then drive in Bombay and Delhi uh, <laughs> just to understand what road rage really is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look forward to that someday. I look forward to that. Yeah. That will be like the highest like adventure sport that you've been in. Like flying F-16s is like, whoa, that's so easy compared to this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Rico, right. thank you so much uh, for coming on the podcast. Tell me, how can people get in touch with you? How can people learn more about this? You have a fantastic book out. Can you tell people about it? Well, sure. Um, just with the number two, mm-hmm. choices.com okay. is, the, is the website. Mm-hmm. But if you'd like to get three downloads, mm-hmm. three, not mm-hmm. two, but three, um, uh, one would be the, the opening to the book and the first chapter. Okay. And really... You just got to read the cover of mm-hmm. just two choices. But if you want to look at the whole book, mm-hmm. yeah, I appreciate that. But um, go to just two choices.com forward slash radio. Okay. That covers podcasts too. Um, right. And then you'll get, you'll have access to three downloads. One is the uh, first chapter of the book and in, in the front matter. Mm-hmm. And the other two are two things that you can hang up. Mm-hmm. You can hang up in your house. Mm-hmm. Uh, one is um, 
like you know, you've got open close signs, right? Open, yeah. Just two choices, right? Nice. You can cut. You can download this, cut mm-hmm. it out, mm-hmm. and say, always hang the open side up. I am open to choosing mm-hmm. better health, better movement, better nutrition, better relationships. Very nice. And, and then the other one that they, the other one they could download, is what I call Captain Hook. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see here, mm-hmm. but the other, this is the choice of road drama, mm-hmm. you know. And so, you know, I can find myself getting hooked into into road drama, and I turn that around, and you can hang that up too. So, justtwochoices.com forward slash radio and free downloads. Super. Thank you so much. Thank um, you. Uh, Thank you so much for this. I absolutely loved it. And I think, you know, these two philosophies of our habits and just two choices merge in so well. So guys, we're going to be doing another podcast um, on Thursday. So please join us for that. It's going to be super interesting. Thank you so much, Rico. Thank you, Ashton. If you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can listen to us on the IVM podcast app or ivmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media. We are at IVM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I am Ashtin Doc on Twitter and Instagram. You can find lots more information on my website, awesome180.com or check out different content on my YouTube channel called AWESOME180. That's Awesome 180. I hope you enjoyed that show. If you aren't following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. What a week we had this week. We had so much crossover, so many great guests. I don't even know where to start. Okay, yeah, I do know where to start. Let's start with Uncle Please Sit. Uncle Please Sit, Joel and Tushar had Hamsini Hariyaran. Hamsini hosts a show called States of Anarchy with their network. She is a China expert, and they discuss the India-China relationship. Really fascinating conversation. Cyrus had two conversations this week instead of our normal Thursday cock and bull. Great conversations, both of them. We'll be back with our regular cock and bull next week. But this week, you could definitely check out the conversation you have with Baron Grover, really fascinating stuff, and Nikhil Taneja, who was the founder of Yuva and the creative director for the India Film Project Festival, which is going on this weekend. He was on the show as well. Cyrus was also on Advertising is Dead this weekend with Varun Dugiralao. Cyrus and Varun discussed the, you know, Cyrus's intent on randomness. Ranveer Brar guested on Gauri Devi Deyal show. This rounds on me. Another amazing conversation over there. Priyanka Kimani, one of the best IP lawyers in this country, was on Storytellers and Story Sellers for a fascinating conversation. Definitely do check that out. And finally, I wanted to congratulate Zarina Punawala for her 100th episode. She had Ashish Vidyarthi as a guest on that. If you have not been listening to the Empowering series, please do. It's one of the great shows out there. And with that, I hope to see you again next week. Hi, I am Sadaf. And I'm Arshit. Khani ka itihas, economics, policy, psychology, sab hai menu pe. Only on the Nankali podcast. Every Wednesday, sif IVM podcast app ya website par. Ya fir jahaan se bhi aap apne podcast sunte ho. 